Drake's Drake's producers are now exposed as, as uh, ghost writers. Absolutely. That that makes sense. Sure, man. Yeah. You know what you're talking about. You got this one, guys. What's going down? It is the At Odds podcast where the burgers are the juiciest. I, we still don't have a, a tagline. And I know there are some people that have been putting forth effort in dropping some suggestions there was one, I, it had a double entendre I liked. I forgot. It was just, you know, we got to workshop these things. It was a little clunky. It was a little too long. We, we need something short. You know, like at odds. I'm loving it. You know, something like that. Not at all in support of McDonald's. How how are the two of you feeling today? I, I'm doing good. We just um, released the full series of The Lesbian Homie, uh, jo- Big Jobs' new series. It went really well last night. The total runtime is like four hours because there's 10 episodes and each episode is like 20 something minutes. And there were a lot of people that just watched the whole thing all the way through and it was dope. So I think this is going to be the one. This 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 one is is really good. Like this one is going to be the one that I think opens up even more doors. And if and if people don't open up doors, we have plans to shoot feature films and things like that. But even from a sales perspective, we're way past where we were for season two currently. And so the way we typically run it is we have a sponsor that provides some funds. Um, so that's the first kind of step of, of monetization. And then we, when it's done, we go direct to fans. So right now it's not available on YouTube or Facebook. It's just available on moment.co. So you can go to moment.co forward slash big job with two G's and people can purchase it. So that's what they did last night. And that's what people are going to do for another week until we drop the first episode on YouTube next Tuesday. And then we'll drop weekly episodes every Tuesday. And what we saw the last time is when we start releasing the episodes on YouTube, that's when the sales really start to drop because we push people over to moment.co to finish the entire series if you would like to. So if you see the first series, I mean the first episode, and then you would like to watch the entire series, then you can go to moment.co and, pur- and purchase the whole thing. So the direct sales is the second is the second step of monetization and then YouTube and Facebook. And then uh, so that's third. And then we'll eventually put it on Tubi as well. Uh, so we have a nice process of monetization before, you know, some network or, you know, production company want, sees what we're doing and wants to be a part of it. Because I don't really see anybody out there that's doing what Big Jaws is doing at the quality and level. I mean, 10 episodes over 20 minutes per episode. So it really is already like a show. And if you watch it and see it like the quality, it should be on TV. Um, and this one to me is way funnier than you know, the first or second second season. So I'm excited to see where this goes. It's kind of like rolling out an album. I mean, yeah, like music, you know, where it is now. I was going to say. There's more emphasis on like post-release. I mean, there definitely was a big buildup to this for his audience, for sure. But like, I'm more excited once that first episode hits, because I feel like once that first episode hits YouTube and Facebook, now it's on, because we got hella content to push via Reels, Um, on his community tab on YouTube. Like we just got a bunch of content to continue to flood people with, to let people know that it's available. So it's got me excited again. It's got me excited. Like I was excited back in the day when I knew like funk volume was going to, you know, be successful. Like I kind of know, I kind of know with this one, you know, it's, it's going to turn some heads. Um, And we had a premiere. I know, and I know I'm going long, long winded with this, but we had a, a live premiere for it on Sunday night. We had over 200 people come out. Taylor Port uh, sponsored it. So we had free drinks. So the, re- the response to the live premiere was dope. You know, we did the little fake red carpet thing because I think that's, what's, that's what is going to help us get to the next level. Like for, for us, we've always just kind of like, you know, did our thing in-house, put it out, interacted with our fans. But I think for TV and film, you got to be a little bit louder about what you're doing here in the city. You got to try to get people in the room, decision makers in the room. So, you know, I think that's another reason why I think this is going to be successful. Just so many more people know what we're doing. So they just got to see the product and hopefully, you know, it just kind of goes from there. So I'm excited about it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to moment.co forward slash big job. And there's a series um, called The Lesbian Homie that is his most popular series. And check it out. Let me know what you think. Major congrats, Dean. 
I think that's super dope. And I love like seeing you excited about something like that because you've been working <clears throat> with Ja for a decade, I guess. I don't know, year well, longer because since the funk volume days and then him becoming a comedian and all this. So I think it's really cool when you stick with something and you finally start to see the traction that you deserve. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't even get to the frustration of receiving traction from fans, but not receiving it from your peers or the industry. I think that a lot of executives who stick with it long enough get to live in that moment. And people are like, man, I'm just trying to get fans. It's like, no, we're past that. Like we got the fans, we need the bread, we need the eyes, we need, and to see it all come together is very inspiring and super cool. And I feel like you just gave like a really quick masterclass on like a rollout process, like super quick. I'm like, damn, that's so fire. And I love moment. I love what they're doing. There's somebody who came out of the, um, the like 2020 blockchain NFT era that to me outlasted and will outlast because what they're offering, you know, so shout out to them. That's super dope. Congrats. I was on a meeting that last week and somebody was like, um, we, I was talking to a sponsor and he was like, you know, uh, cause we're, we're about to do this rollout with, you know, do you know, da, da, da. she's from the lesbian homie. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, yeah, so she she's she signed on to be one of our influencers and he was breaking down this deal to me. And I'm like, oh, shit, like. And this I'm saying this in no disrespectful way, like I'm saying it to honor her. I was like, oh, shit, she's like a major deal in his world because of the brand deal that they struck up. Like he was breaking it down for me. And I'm like, damn, the lesbian homie is really, I was like, yeah, like I know like Dane. And I was like, like, yeah, he manages John. He's one of the producers of the show. Da, da, da. He was like, oh, okay, word. I'm like, damn, there's no love for the back end people. But like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm just saying, lesbian homie is definitely, he was just talking about like, oh, cause she does this and she's out here. She's in LA right now, but she's coming to Texas and yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, it was super cool just to see like, I like, I'm seeing it pop up in places that have nothing to do with you, but like seeing its real world impact. That's why when you said you could, you, you can tell that it's about to like do something. I know that that's not just like sensationalism or you're feeling good rolling off the premiere. I'm seeing it pop up in my world with people completely unrelated to you. So major congrats on that. I know that has to feel good. That's super tight. Nah, I appreciate it, well, it. It sounds like the, the uh, the, the best track. Well, you've always preached this, Dame. Diversity when it comes to marketing. So direct to fan, um, and then streaming services, multiple streaming services, premium models, micro content. Same with music. So if if you're doing music, yeah, find a way to get uh, your music more directly to fans. Merchandise too, but. Um, if you if you can afford to, don't don't neglect the the streaming platforms, and you can do that for free, for three whole months. You can upload as much as you want. Use the code at odds. Two loss dot com is the distributor for free, premium distribution. You can you can put a lot of music up in that time period. Yeah, yeah, we forgot to to plug two loss. The last thing I will say, and just kind of some some learnings from this is some of the ideas we just get from fans. Cause like I was interacting, I was in the chat last night and people would be like, man, it'd be dope if you guys had this normally, like back in the day, Ja would always do like a bloopers at the end of every sketch that he puts on YouTube. He stopped, he stopped doing that. But people were like, man, we definitely need the outtakes and the bloopers from this. So that's something that we're going back to the drum board because we got, you know, terabytes upon terabytes of, of footage and there definitely were some moments. So, and then people were like, man, we need to, because the music was put together by my guy, Bari. Bari's a really dope um, producer and artist. So he scored it. Uh, so, and they were like, man, we need the soundtrack. Because we didn't put together an actual soundtrack for this one. I did have my guy, Will Wildfire, like create a custom song that we play heavily throughout the series. Um, but we're going to put together the, the playlist of songs that we used and promote that as well. So we get a lot of ideas from the fans and the fact that it, it goes for 10 weeks. I mean, we have a lot of chances to just pivot, do something new. Of course we have a shitload of stuff like already planned 
in terms of reels and going live and, you know, all these other activations. But, you know, listen to the fans sometimes. Sometimes they got some some good ideas um, that you can implement. And because now the focus, I would say, is more post-release and kind of you, you have an opportunity to always breathe life into what you're doing or to pivot or just to do some new stuff. So, um, you know, that, that's what we do as, as I'm interacting with the fans. I'm just listening to see how, what they want so we can, um, you know, execute some of that stuff. Well, speaking of listening to the fans, <laughs> I, I don't want to segue. Yeah. I, <laughs> perfect segue for an amazing topic. The Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. I um, just, you know, la- last week I said I didn't want to get into it and I still don't, but I just want to explain further why. And here's, here's a great example of that. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. Um, because this this happened, and it's not just going to be skewed towards Drake uh, or my loud ass cat. This was posted, and people lost their minds when somebody pulled up the writer's credits for the Push Ups diss record. Oh my God! It was written not just by A. Graham, whoever that guy is, but al- also Matthew and Noel. Oh no, Drake has he has ghostwriters. Well, one, a ghostwriter wouldn't be credited. Um, and two, all anyone had to do was take these names and Google them. That's it. And you would know that Matthew Samuels is Boy Wonder and um, Noel is OVO Noel or Noel. I'm, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he produced Slime You Out, which is Drake's more recent non-Kendrick Lamar related single. But it didn't stop there because... Somebody, you know, as fans do, someone posted information about Kendrick's music and said, well, he has ghostwriters, too. And they posted the writer's credits for The Heart Part 5, which Drake played off of on The Heart Part 6, which is was his last diss track. And it showed that there were multiple songwriters, including Kendrick Lamar, Johnny Kosick, Matt Schaefer, Jake Kosick, Leon Ware and Arthur Ross. Well, again, all the fuck you had to do was Google that because Johnny and Jake were the producers. Uh, Matt Schaefer. Oh God, I forgot who Matt Schaefer was. Arthur Ross is, is um, a, a relative of Diana Ross, songwriter who worked with Leon Ware. I recognize Leon Ware's name right away. He was a producer and, and songwriter for Marvin Gaye. And... Um, guess why he's listed there oh because they sampled a marvin gay song so this is why i don't have these conversations because it's not about the who had the better song it's not about this and that it's about everything but that and people are just trying to get these these moments for themselves the content creation space is in heaven right now because they can just post some stupid ass shit like this and say oh um, Drake's ghostwriter's name is Matthew Samuels and they know not a, a high enough percentage of people reading that will be smart or resourceful or even curious enough to Google Matthew Samuels and say oh that's Boy Wonder that's the guy that's been producing for Drake since his career started oh wow that's crazy this content is just alarmist and wrong for no reason I, and I posted it just because I think it's relevant to producers because a lot of producers still don't understand that we are considered songwriters and a bunch of these dumb motherfuckers were in the comments talking about oh you just ride in drake's dick fuck drake you a bitch drake a bitch uh you're just trying to make it clear that that you're taking sides and that you you just you know acting like uh producers can't ghost right too like bitch i i am you know what you're right forgive me for even trying forgive me for even trying I, that's what the fuck I get. You're right. Drake's Drake's producers are now exposed as, as uh, ghost writers. Absolutely. That, that makes sense. Sure, man. Yeah. You know what you're talking about. You got this one guys. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with the beef. And then more dumb shit is happening and yeah, I'm listening. I don't like a lot of the shit that people are saying. And someone was commenting that, that um, women are being weaponized in this whole battle. And, 
children are being weaponized in the whole. Yeah. What do you think, Dame? I, I think that it, you know, again, I wasn't, I wasn't excited about it from the jump because I don't even know like what the criteria is for a good disc record. Like, is it who's the best detective? Like, is it, is it who can just say the wildest thing with no proof? I mean, these guys are saying things that ultimately, you know, especially with like Diddy going through what he's going, I'm sure like agencies are on high alert. Oh, he's a, let's look into this. Like, I, I just don't know, like what, is it, is it who raps better? Is it the best beat? Is it like, I thought it was about the music, you know, and now it's really just about who can uncover the most ridiculous stuff that may or may not be true. Like it's, it's just, and then it just gives, it just gives ammo to all these weird content creators to then like start all of these theories and go do their lives. Like it's, it's just spiraled out of control to me. Like salute to both of them for, you know, stepping up to the plate and releasing, you know, records. But I just think it got out of hand and that's what I was, you know, that's why I was <laughs> applauding J. Cole for kind of bowing out from the beginning because this is wild. Like who, like, it's just, I just, I just don't understand. Like people will just start making shit up. Like, you know, people will be like, oh, I saw Drake buy a million views. I was like, oh, you literally saw him like with, you were at his studio and they were on the, on whatever shady site, but like, no, I, it, they, they were saying that just because the view count jumped up hella high at, at one point, like if there's a lot of traction on a YouTube video, you never know what happens with the, the count. Like it can go crazy and just jump from, you know, you might think it's a hundred thousand and then it might go to 2 million because there's that much traction on the video, not because somebody bought views and then people just screenshot stuff, run with it. It's just gotten out of control. And it's so far removed from what I thought it was going to be about. Like just, you know, who was the best lyricist, who can, you know, beat selection, things like that. I don't even know what we're judging anymore. And I'm worried about these cats actually, you know, getting investigated by real agencies because of these. I have no, I don't know these cats. I don't know if Kendrick beats his wife or fiance. I don't know if Drake is a pedophile, but now there's just a, a different level of heat on the situation because cats wanted to participate in a rap battle. And I, I don't know what we're doing at this point. Sorry, let me quickly revise what I said. Um, Jonathan Kosich, Matt Schaefer, and Jake Kosich are known collectively as beach noise. I had to do my Googles as well. So they, Matt Schaefer was a, a co-writer on that Kendrick track because he was a co-producer. And then also, rest in peace to um, Arthur Ross. He had a solo career as T-Boy, but I didn't know that he and his wife were murdered in Detroit in the 80s. So, Or maybe it was the 90s. Yeah, it was the 90s. My bad. Because I was a little ass kid when, when that happened, so I wasn't paying too much attention, even though I listened to his music as a little kid. Um, yeah, it, Look look it up yourself. Look up the um Arthur Ross murders. Ugh. I I I wish that when this started, like Kendrick just dropped not like us and just left it alone. Cause that that to me is is a kill shot. Like he activated the West Coast. Like I haven't heard a song getting played out of cars as much as I've already heard like not like us on the West Coast. Like I think I think the mistake Drake made, I think Drake like looked at Spotify numbers and was like, oh, I, more people listen to me in Southern California than Kendrick. So those people must ride for me. I, I don't know. Maybe he didn't do that. But like you don't want Kendrick to activate the West Coast and like where he's from. Because these people like it, they're passionate. Like this, it's a different level of fandom then a lot, there are a lot of like passive, you know, Drake fans, you know, he streams hella much, you know, so people be, even come to, to his shows or whatever. He might even be able to do more nights consecutively in the Staples Center, but then, then maybe Kendrick Lamar. I, I don't know if that may or may not be true, but I think he made a mistake when, or Kendrick, you know, pressed the red button and he made a, a, a big record because that's not what, Kendrick did what people thought Drake was going to do in terms of make just a huge record that's going to get played for the rest of the, the year at barbecues everywhere. Like not like us is a hit. 
like he got mustard. He got mustard on the beat. Like I wish he would have just dropped that, and then that would have been the end of it. All this other stuff about you know just going into de- detective mode and uncovering things that may or may not be true. Children or fake children or you know being a pedophile. That's wild. But but not like us. You know, I'm sure it's a hit. It's going to be hit everywhere. But on the West Coast, he activated folks. And, you know, cats out here two-stepping, sea-walking. It's play. Like I just walked to Sweet Greens the other night, and literally three cars drove by playing Not Like Us. Like, that. that's the record, that's the record that people are going to, that, that's going to have the, the longest life and going to be turned into a classic, for sure. And, well, in my opinion. Um yeah, not like us is a banger. It may, I, like I said, I said before that I probably listen to more Drake's music than Kendrick's music, but you know this, this song probably trumps every song. I, I'm I'm not from Compton, but I'm from I'm from the West Coast, and it's just like, you know, I think in a battle, if it's not a cheat code, but if you can activate, because I don't really think I don't think people in Toronto support Drake like people in LA ride with Kendrick. Um, that's just my, it, it, I could be wrong about that, but activating the West coast was, you know, it, 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 it put things over the top for Kendrick. It's like, um, how 21 Savage has said, and this is like, you know, he's a consistent, um, collaborator and I'm not speaking currently. I don't know where he stands or if there's a side or whatever, but 21 Savage has said in an interview like a long time ago, he was like, the streets is not playing Drake. He was like, if you ask a street dude in Atlanta who the biggest rapper, best rapper alive, whatever, they're going to say future, you know, because it's like he has so much cultural significance. He's going up, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I think the way that I see it, you know, because we talked about it last week and I was like, yeah, if I'm if I'm making a mix or like um like i'm gonna be out with people drake is definitely getting airtime but if we're talking about like me listening to hip-hop records i'm spinning kendrick lamar back to back to back like if i'm in a hip-hop mood like if we're talking about like preference or whatever but it's like because kendrick to me is a hip-hop artist and drake is a pop star who raps right and that's not the delineation is meant to be no disrespect. So for me, I agree with you, Dame. It's like folks in California rock with him. I think our folks in uh, Canada rock with him as a cultural icon, the ultimate crossover artist, the biggest to ever do it from Canada, and one of the biggest artists to ever live. That's undeniable. But if we're talking about like hometown glory, like like street connection. And I'm not even talking about no hood shit. Like I'm just talking about like homegrown. We know where you're from. We know your cultural references. We know the language. Like this is a thesis on us. You can't, numbers don't, don't do that to people. Num- seeing somebody being like, oh, he's huge. That doesn't rally you in a way that's saying this person is ours. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, that's like, you know, when we look at, I I think of people like uh, like Megatron, you know what I'm saying? Like Calvin Johnson, I went to high school with him. It don't matter where that dude went in the league. I don't even watch the NFL. You bring up Calvin Johnson, I know stats. I'm like, what do I know about the Detroit Lions? Nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I, they like I knew about his contract, whatever. It's nothing like, you know, like I think about Cam Newton, what he's doing in Atlanta, what he's doing for this city. Like, I don't care he's not playing football anymore. Like, I'm a fan of him because he's homegrown. His language is ours, his style is ours. The way that he you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think I think that people when you see this, the 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 beef coming up, you know, I'm always gonna do like 
uh, I'm going to be the social engineer and, and break it down from a from a cultural and, and ethos standpoint. I think that there's so much value, you know, like let's relate it to our audience. There's so much value and people feeling ownership of who you are and what you're doing. And when I say ownership, I don't mean in a weird way. I mean, like in a like almost territorial, like, nah, I rock with them because they're ours, you know, first. Yeah, like an affiliative way. You're building, yes. Yes. you're building affinity with and it doesn't have to be regional. It, it right. can be anything. It can, it, you know, like Wiz Khalifa is the guy that, you know, and Be Real is, are, are two examples of people who the cannabis community will ride with forever, no matter what. That's affinity. You know, with, with Kendrick, it happens to be, um, right now, it happens to be a West Coast sort of thing. But I don't even I think, think it's just West Coast. I think because he has his coast on his back, there's way more for others to now gravitate to. Mm -hmm. Like Atlanta people really rock. Well, there's other reasons, but it's like for us, it is really about being homegrown. It's really about being a person of your people and that I like that cultural identity. So even though not like us is definitely like a West Coast stepping thing, folks was like, oh, it's going up in clubs in LA. I'm like, y'all need to check out Atlanta. The strippers, every like I'm talking about it, it they're playing it in parks at the barbecue. It's it's a cultural moment because it's tied to a regional uh dialect it's tied to a regional identity is it's not about i'm the biggest i'm the best he's like these are my people i'm rallying my people and everybody can support a war cry that's why you think about um and i'm not trying to get political here but when 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 you identify with somebody who's marginalized um it's not hard to say, hey, this thing is wrong. Like, why are you okay with this? Or, hey, this thing I support because I identify from that from my people. Do you know what I'm saying? And so I think that there's such a value. You know, uh, people were going back and forth about Drake and Kendrick for the longest. And I agree with Dame. I have not listened to these songs. I haven't even run Not Like Us fully. I just can't get away with it because the joint is outside. Like it's, I, I have a homegirl who's a DJ and she, the night it dropped, dropped three different mixes and they were so fire. So I'm like listening to her mixing like all these West Coast songs, old school, new school, new school uh, into like, so it's like, I think there's, again, bringing it back to our audience, there's such a value in saying, these are my people, I am with you, come with me. You know, so like when people were talking stats, numbers, opulence, all this, a lot of that dissipated when, you know, even skill set, a lot of that dissipated when he said, hey, these are my people, you are me, I am you, let's go. And I think that our audience I, could take some value from saying like, I, when you identify with somebody, you identify with a region or a culture by putting it on your back and aligning with it. You know, again, even Metro Boomin, he dropped a, a, a he dropped a challenge, which is wild. And his <laughs> Metro, the thing is, it's like, I think even like the uh, co colloquialism of that, like the flavor of what he did there is such an Atlanta flavored Atlanta coded energy because Atlanta dudes, Atlanta people, we're just funny people. We will play in your face all day, every day, because at the end of the day, if there's really some smoke, we'll pull up on you. And I'm not even talking about violence. I'm talking about like, let's have a conversation or like, if you want to fight, we'll fight. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, but I'm going to stand on this and this is where I stand and I'm going to be funny about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, Kendrick got the kill shot, Metro's bringing goofiness to it, you know, and I just think that there's such a value in leaning into who you are, where you're from. And a lot of people don't get off the Internet, so they don't have a cultural identity outside of cosplaying it as as something that they think they should be or who, you know what I'm saying? It's like when I'm around people and I'm different, I'm not trying to be different. I'm me. And that's what I feel like in this conversation, you're seeing people represent who's representing themselves and who's representing the idea of something.
Yeah. Yeah, I can't really name an artist that has longevity who doesn't have some sort of identity behind their brand that directly relates to people. I just can't. I mean, probably we're going to get comments saying, oh, what about him? What about him? What about him? I'm like, no, they, they might not represent something to you, That's but they the represent way. something to others. And those others are the, the, the fans. They're not, you're not the fans. And, you know, you see that a lot where a lot of people try to force that too, especially from cities and regions that, this is going to sound harsh, but that no one cares about and that don't really care about building an identity in, in the sense that I don't feel like my city cares that much. It's great to put the city on your back, but, you know, we're like a mid-sized city. We're not. We're not, uh, we're not the West Coast. We're not, in it, you know, even even putting the Midwest on your back. What's the Midwest known for? Segregation. No, 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 because Chicago, you know, Indiana, all Chicago, those, yeah. I can see you put You put Chicago on your back. You're, it's a different thing. It, it, like, people in Chicago aren't going to be like, oh, yeah, Madison, we're excited for that. They're just not. I'm saying that, you know, I'm only a couple hours away from Chicago, but I don't go to Chicago and be like, yeah, I'm from Madison. The way people from Chicago come to Madison and say, yeah, I'm from Chicago. There's just way more city pride and I would say relevant city pride in the sense that people just know more about Chicago. And so it's just a more, I guess, Val it, there's more social currency being from Chicago and representing that than there is being from um, my city and then repping an entire region that I feel like is pretty fractured. You know, like when I look at all the big artists from the Midwest, like Eminem reps Detroit, Chief Keith reps Chicago, Nelly reps St. Louis. They don't really rep Midwest like that. Bone Thugs rep um Cleveland do or die reps isn't that Chicago the same? isn't that the same for folks I from Atlanta or from you know yeah no it is I'm saying it is I'm just saying advice to people who try to shoehorn their identities into their branding I would say just just watch for that because because a lot of people will try to represent it you know there are smaller towns like there are tons of little towns all over the place and it's it's hard to or, or even com micro communities that not too many people know about that people will try to shoehorn their their way into or, or they'll try to shoehorn these identities into their branding that just aren't really effective you know like if if i put the midwest on my back one i don't represent the whole midwest two do i have buy-in from the whole midwest Three, what does that mean for the world at large? And if I if I don't have good answers, then I don't think that's a great branding strategy. I, you know, I have el other aspects of myself that I can uh, use to build community. I think that regionality can be secondary or tertiary. I, I don't think it has to be your first identity. Like for me, <clears throat> my... I, a lot of people's first sweeping take of me is Atlanta, but at its core, your first take of me is going to be like embodied black woman. You may not know it because I'm not going to first mention that. I'm going to first mention my region, but you're seeing my region on me. You're seeing, you know what I'm saying? And then you're also probably seeing my belief system on me before I even say, do you know what I'm saying? So I think that, I think authenticity when having um, a branded identity is what is most important. Uh, a city or a region is an easier buy-in by default because you're connected to a wider culture. But I still, I think that a lot of people, I will, I do want to also caution because a lot of people will be like, yeah, I'm from a small town, so people don't fuck with me. And it's like, man, that doesn't matter. Like, like, 
it's it's not about you like that could be part of your identity i'm repping for the small town heroes you know it, it part of your identity could be your um racial culture it could be um car culture are you what like and that's why i feel like people have to figure out what's the bigger culture that they have bought into that they identify with is it gaming culture is it sports culture is it is it hair care is it do you have locks? Do you really play base? Like to me, one of Dame's biggest identities is this dude is the sports dude. When you get on here, though, for this podcast, that's secondary, tertiary, maybe fourth, fifth, sixth thing that you notice about Dame. But if you like really pay attention, he always has uh, an athletic team that you've never heard of. Like they're their paraphernalia on or like some sort of, you know, like, mm -hmm. and then like, if you look at his Twitter, if, then he's talking about all baseball. If you look at his lifestyle, he's playing, he's, you know what I'm saying? But that's not, he doesn't come in the room. Like I'm the biggest sports fan ever. Cause it's like, he's authentically himself and that's part of his identity. And he's also like, he, he cares about the Indies. He doesn't come on here yelling about, Direct a fan, direct a fan, but he just literally boom, 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 quickly broke down. Like he's he's inundated in the culture, and I'm I'm saying I'm breaking down Dame just because like for me I'm a little bit more pronounced about the things that I do like and identify with, and Dame is more subtle. But it's always we're all I think all three of us fully integrate into our cultural identities, regardless of the culture that we choose to highlight the most. And I think that's what's missing from a lot of artists. Again, a lot of people are cosplaying some sort of cultural identity that they think. That's why a lot of people talk about drugs or whatever, whatever. It's like, I'm sure at some point, all three of us have done something, but you're never going to see us sitting on here, like talking about drug culture because that's not something that we that's not a part of our identity even if you know like you're one of us or all of us are smokers right like that's not something that we're like like that's not a part of our branded identity but a lot of people say oh well i smoke people like smoking music let me just identify as a smoking brand and it's yeah. like that may not even nah. work for you. And no I, because you have again you have to like you said it's an authenticity thing because if i came out and i was like i'm putting the whole midwest on my back Back to that example, the Midwest would have to agree with that. They would have to put themselves on my back. You know I what I mean? Just like Atlanta to agree with me. Atlanta's on my back, though. I'm the most ATL and ATL, -y, though. I'm gonna be honest. They don't have an option. They were Atlanta rocks with me because I'm an ATL, though. They don't even. That's I'm just saying. Aaron is the exception. But I wouldn't even. You know, when we first came out, you know, we're we're from the Valley. It's it's part of LA, but like. You know, some people from L.A. will tell you that it's not L.A. And I'm OK with that. It's whatever, you know, and some people from the Valley would be like, man, you guys should say that you're putting, you know, the Valley on your back. like nobody cares about that. Like, I, I, I feel like you should just do what you do. And, and ultimately, eventually you'll get the support of your community. Um, but taking a step back, I think what we learn from this is or what people can learn from this battle, like all monthly listeners are not the same. You know, I don't know what Drake's analysis was for him to step. And I applaud him for even stepping to the plate. But Kendrick did a very masterful job at othering him. Like he made he made Drake an other. Right. He's not like us. And it's not like it's just not like us from the West Coast. He's not like a, he's not hip hop. He's not American. He gave he gave people in the States a an opportunity to rally against Drake. And I think a lot of people had a lot of people hate on Drake and maybe they have a good reason to do so. But as soon as, you know, Kendrick or some of these other big stars started to say something, it starts a wave of momentum for other people to be like, you know what? I didn't like Drake either. Like, and it's just a wave of anti Drake stuff. So he did a great job at like othering Drake. And now people are having conversations of like, whether or not Drake is even hip hop. I'm like, yo, like <laughs> this is this is this is wild and it spiraled out of control. But I guess I mean that's the nature of the I just don't like the act I just that to me is fair in terms of if you if you're gonna battle like that that kind of stuff is fair. The other stuff that that we talked about in the beginning, like just the accusations and and illegal, potentially illegal things that now maybe could get investigated, like 
do we really want like Drake out? I mean, maybe some people want Drake out of hip hop, but like Drake has been at the top of the game for, you know, what, a, a decade plus. Um, I just hope it stops here. I just hope I just hope it stops here. Did not like us not have like allegations in it too. I feel like again I haven't listened through to <laughs> most. I literally just know dun, 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 and then I know the hook, you know, because everybody's like like <laughs> sea walking to it. But I, I that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like that that song is is playing by the same rules. He just turned it into a bop, which is also yeah. like a. a, a another level of a diss you know what i'm saying like that i just i again i haven't I, i'm i'm not it just doesn't for me uh connect to me like things like this even though i feel connected to hip-hop culture black culture i think that this is a different cultural identity that i don't feel connected with so i haven't heard it but i thought like he was he was throwing crazy shots in this song too right yeah nice. yeah there we go it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a slapper. Like this song is going to be played, played forever. It might end up being because it's slap, like, you know, hit them up and some of these other records, they were aggressive, but they, they didn't slap like this song. Like this song is <laughs> on another level. And then what Metro did, I mean, I think it's worth even, you know, maybe even going into more because me, people may not be f familiar with what he did as a producer because Drake did tell him to shut, like he said he, in a record he, or something, he told him to, to shut up, sit down and go make some drums or something. I think he said that. It's right record. after, it was right after Like That. So I know yeah. about this because I listened to Like That because that what the album was a cultural moment for Atlanta. I just yeah. want to say Atlanta is the epicenter of all of this. Y'all can say what you want. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, he said um, what at the top of he was like shut up, shut up and play them drums or something like that. Yeah. And so like there's been a lot of but, trolls yeah. and funny things with that. And then um, yeah, he dropped. Go ahead, you could go into it, then. This no, is, if you were not on Twitter, you should be on Twitter because you're missing a lot of culture if you're not on Twitter. And I'm not. I have some friends that did this go, already. But so. there's like I haven't listened to none of these songs, and I'm well up on this joint because I'm on Twitter. Now this, I mean, this was super creative from a producer standpoint because obviously, you know, much like me as a manager, like when Hot was doing his thing against me, like I'm not going to respond with a rap diss, like I don't, and I don't have the platform, so I kind of felt like my my hands were tied. I just kind of have to take it, whatever, um, unless I actually see him like <laughs> in person. But um, but this, the way that that Metro responded was he made an instrumental. Um, or a beat and it has in the hook BBL Drizzy uh, and he released it and he encouraged artists to rap over it. So now there's probably thousands, ten, there's probably tens of thousands of songs at this point that are floating around with BBL Drizzy as the hook. So I thought that was really dope. And he creative. didn't just encourage people, he incentivized people. <laughs> he said the best artists on this song gets my beat for free and not just like internet free. He's saying, I will license this to you to release on your own platform, citing Metro Booming as the producer. And I think that is next level, diabolical and super funny, but also, and I listen to that because it's a beat. It is, it's when I talk, it's, it's prime. I'm talking about prime metro. Like it's it is and this sounds crazy because somebody I saw somebody else from Atlanta say this and I was like, Yeah, that's that ATL coming out. They were like, This may be one of the best metro beats I've ever heard. I'm like, all right, but that's what made me listen. And I'm yeah. going to say it's, it's definitely top five metro beats I've ever heard. And I'm not this is no it's this is not the Atlanta in me. I'm telling y'all. It's, that, it's top I, this is as much as I've been pulled into this. He went off with that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a top tier track for sure. Somebody's going to create potentially a, another classic from this. So you're going to get not like us, and then you're going to get BBL Drizzy. Um, so, yeah. are either of you nervous <clears throat> about the logistics of this contest? Though, like, how are you going to? I am. I'm, I'm nervous back for to the Atlanta ish. This joint is. Nobody's going to win because there's too many people doing it. Pete, it's just a cultural moment. It's this is a 
this is the this is the part of the Atlanta industry where people are like, man, I signed up to go da da da, and I'm supposed to talk to 18 A and R's, and I only talked to one that night. It's like my bad, big dog. We for, we forgot about that. Like like the promise has been made. I think it was just like a moment, and he's smart. Is marketing instead of being like. If anybody wants to rap to this, he says, "Hey, I'm I'm giving you this beat." So I mean, it may it, it may come out, but I just think it's gonna be hella people releasing this song, pro- maybe making claims. Who knows? I don't know. I know you're thinking about content ID. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm thinking about like I already know. when. Yeah.